everyday Americans are wondering, is there going to be meat on the table in the months ahead, given some of the headlines that we're seeing out there? Well, I'll tell you what, the guy to talk to, Fred Wacker with the Montana Stock Growers Association. Uh, Fred, great to hear from you. You're probably back on the ranch in Miles City as we speak, I imagine. Thank you for having me. We are loading cattle this morning to uh, go to uh, summer summer grass. All right. Well, thanks for taking some time out uh, of your busy schedule. You know, I, one of the things I talked with Nicole about earlier is there's a lot of concerning headlines out there. You know, uh, Breitbart.com producers warn America is facing protein shortage in coronavirus era. You know, we see all the troubling headlines with the meatpacking plants, and a lot of folks are wondering, hey, uh, where are we going to send our animals, for one, from the producer standpoint, but then the consumers are wondering, are we going to have meat on the table uh, down the road? What's your take? Oh, I think we'll have plenty of, uh, of meat. The uh, problem comes with the uh, processing plants employees. Uh, they, I've talked to one plant, the Tyson plant. They've taken some really great steps. They've put shields between workers uh, at the uh, processing plants. They, uh, they have also uh, have a very stringent testing program that they test all of their employees before they, uh, they can come onto the, on the farm. And so if they, if they test, uh, their test they're giving them is, is a temperature test. And uh, if they have any sniffles or cold or complaints, they don't, they don't go. They've uh, changed the break time. Uh, they don't let as many people go to the break rooms at a time. They keep them very, very separate. They've also increased the uh, size of the workspaces so that they, uh, they have people not on top of one another or as close as they used to, used to always have. So I think they've done the right thing. They've been hit hard with the, with the virus. But we have lots of cattle. We have lots of beef. In fact, the, the processing plants uh, uh, and uh, the, uh, the, the packing companies have not been buying all of the beef that has been offered to them. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Well, some of the, I know it's led to some other ideas and, you know, I'll hear this from listeners and we'll throw out ideas. You know, a lot of people are wondering, hey, given given the challenges facing the, the meat packing plants, could we do more to, to butcher more of this beef locally? Could we, you know, could we could we change up some of the state regulations, change up some of the federal regulations to make it easier to, to butcher the beef here locally? But then from what I hear, a lot of the local butchers are, are pretty, they're pretty, pretty busy as it is already. Well, they've got their, their normal work. And as you know, Montana does not have a, a huge amount of, uh, of virus problems. In fact, uh, you know, we've had some deaths, so I mean, we take it seriously. But on the other, on the other hand, uh, uh, you take these, uh, these big plants, they are so efficient that in probably one hour, they can take care of all the cattle that the Montana plants could take care of in an entire week. And I mean, they, they, uh, they handle thousands of them. And I think we're, we're going to have enough beef as they get people back to work. And these are very skilled people. And, uh, it just, you can't just go down the street to the job service and, and pick up some more skilled meat, meet people. So, uh, I, I think, uh, I think we're going to be we're going to be work into to an okay deal. Uh, I, I, the big thing is to get people tested. Do not let this thing con- continue to in these processing plants and uh, have healthy people. And I think we'll probably not run into a serious problem. This is where Montana talks. Well, one of the, the one of the big questions we've been hearing from everybody, you know, lots of farmers and ranchers and other folks out there is. And the concern that they're sharing is, hey, our prices are low, but yet we're seeing beef disappear from, from grocery store shelves. I certainly saw that early on, at least, where, where you could find some of the frozen beef, but you couldn't find the fresh ground beef or whatever. But, but they're saying, hey, we're seeing these high prices at the retail front. We, we know the packers are getting, are, are getting higher prices for it. Why aren't we, the ranchers, getting higher prices here? And uh, Fred Wacker with the Montana Stock Growers Association, I know you guys have called for an investigation uh, into uh, you know potential market manipulation. What's your take? Because I know you've you talk with the producers on the ground, but you're also, through your capacity, you're able to, to meet with the big dogs as well. Well, it's a serious uh, thing for the farmers and ranchers and for the cattle feeders. Because right now these cattle are uh, were bought last fall. They've been fed all winter, 
and uh, the cattle are uh, the prices are are uh, like uh, three hundred dollars a head lower than they were last year, and the cattle are fr- quite frankly losing about two hundred bucks per head, and so it's a, it, it's a very serious thing. And you said it absolutely correct that the uh, the retailer is paying uh, more or as much for the beef as always, and the packer is uh, is uh, is being able to uh, to charge more. Now, here's what here's one of the real important facts. The real important fact is is that the packer is not able to run at at full speed. So we have less meat being available until we get people people healthy. But with that being said, the uh, the packer's expenses per pound of beef goes up when he can't do his full efficiency because he only has a half a crew showing showing up. So they're going to have to they're going to have to have more for this beef when they sell it. What they are doing is because they're not there's way more cattle available to be processed than what they can process, and so therefore it is a buyer's market. And so they're buying these cattle worth the, really worth the money to them, and then they're taking them in as they need them, and they're putting it out onto a short sales market, and they're making some excessive profits. We think that's unfair, and that's why one of the reasons that Montana stock growers and other 22 other state stock growers or organizations, we have called for an investigation by the United States uh, Justice Department uh, of being uh, uh, Attorney General Bars. We think that we need to look into it. We all hope that there isn't anything going on, but it's time that we cleared the air, and then if it is, then we've got to make some changes in the way we price Fat, fat cattle, because this thing is just not going to work for the cattle feeder or for the farmer and rancher. Less than two minutes to go here as we chat with Fred Wacker with the Montana Stock Growers Association, president of the Montana Stock Growers. Fred, what about uh, imported beef? I know there's there's folks raising concerns, seeing a lot of social media action on that front. Uh, what's your take on that? Well, we think that uh, imported beef is always uh, an issue, but remember if you're selling something around the world, you have to buy some, some things. And so we never have enough grind in the United States. So that we call on South America and, and other places, Canada, to furnish us uh, grind. But everybody has to remember that, like Canada, they buy over twice as much beef from us as what we buy from, from them. But still, you have to trade with these people. So we're going to have some trade back and forth. There's a lot of people calling for country of origin labeling. I think that's a real good thing if we get the right bill passed and we and we do truly label it and we do truly have a label on that that the, when the consumer picks up a package of meat, the label is not on the bottom in a one inch square with 900 words in it. It's a nice big American flag with a big label on the on the top of it. So I think there's a lot of things going to happen in the beef thing through this virus. There's going to be a lot of changes. And I think uh, we're going to come through it, but we're going to have beef. We're maybe now, maybe you can't have quite as much as what you would like to have. But uh, as these people heal up, you will see in a very short while that there will be a beef and excess beef in, in, in the supermarket. All right. Fred Wacker, president of the Montana Stock Rose. Always a pleasure to chat with you. Thanks so much for joining us from Miles City. Thank you for having me, and you have a wonderful day.